All right, so looking at rational inequalities, this is similar to the inequalities we did before, and we can use a number line just like we did before to solve these. Um, the one thing that we need to do is we typically want to make things equal to zero. We need to consider all of our vertical asymptotes and all of our x-intercepts. Okay, the reason that we need to do this is vertical asymptotes will change where the graph is, and x-intercepts obviously can change where the graph is. So the first thing we can find by factoring out our equations is always our vertical intercepts. So like here, we can see that x cannot equal 3 because that would make this undefined. Now I'm going to move everything to one side and I'm going to solve. So we'd have 4. Um, actually, let's do it this way. So let's have 4 is less than 20 times x minus 3, and then 4. So we've got 4 less than 20x minus 60. So that's going to be um, 64, is it? 64 is less than 20x. And we know that 64 over 20 is less than x. That would actually be our interval. Okay, linear equations are what we're looking for here. Okay, so linear equations are probably the hardest one to understand. This is our final answer. Okay, we can reduce that down. We can divide it by what, 4 and get 16 over 5 if we wanted to. Um, this equation is true when x is greater than, so let's change that, let's make it 16 over 5, and that would be done, okay? We could find our x-intercepts by making y equal to 0 and going through and solving, and we're going to find it happens at 16 over 4, okay? So we've got 16 over 4. Um, our intervals for this, what we're going to have to look for is we've got an open interval at 3 and 16 over 4, or sorry, 16 over 4, 16 over 5, excuse me, is actually greater than 3. So we're over here somewhere. So 16 over 5 would be, what, 3.2. So what I'm going to do is I would just substitute in to make sure that this equation holds true. Okay, so if I put in a number that's less than um, less than 3, so if we put in 0. So if we put in 0 and checked our equation, is, and we're going back to the original equation here. Okay, so 4 minus 4 over a negative that. So this is true. So that works. Okay. This is where between 3 and 3.2, I would check something like 3.1. Okay, well, does this work at 3.1? So now we've got 4 over... 3.1 minus 3. Well, 3.1 minus 3 is going to be 4 over 0.1, and that's going to be 40. 40 is not less than 3, or sorry, less than 20, so that doesn't work. Now, if we choose a number that's greater, let's say 10,000 or 1,000. Okay, 4 over 997 is going to be less than 20, so that does work. So therefore, this equation works at these intervals. Okay, so we're from 0 to, or sorry, from negative infinity to 3, union with 3.2 to infinity. Okay, so now we're going to look at the next one. Okay, so we're going to come over here, 
can't really see anything from this. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to factor it first. Okay, so um, on the top there, let's change that to a squared. Okay, I don't want to deal with a cubic right now. So we're going to have x minus 4, x plus 1 over <coughs> x minus 3, x minus 2. So our vertical asymptotes happen at 3 and 2. And our x-intercepts, we only have to look at the top of the equation here. It's already rearranged to be on one side. We don't have to do anything like we did with the linear equation. So our x-intercepts here are going to be 4 and negative 1. So on our intervals, we're equal to here. So this one's actually a little bit harder. So we have negative 4. So x-intercept, because of that equal to or greater sign, negative 1 is colored in. 2, it's a vertical asymptote, is not colored in. 3 is a vertical asymptote, is not colored in. 4 is colored in. So here's our, our line. Okay. Now we have to be greater than 0. So really, to be greater than 0, it has to either be a negative over a negative or a positive over a positive. It can't be any combination. So what we need to have here is either all positive numbers or an even number of negative brackets. So what I'm doing is I'm going to substitute my numbers in. So we'll substitute. I'll write them above like we used to. I've got negative 1,000. This one will be 0. And then 2.5, 3.5, and we'll call this 1,000. Okay, and now I'm going to check each bracket, and then I'm going to have an overall. Okay, so negative 1,000 is going to give me a negative, negative on the top, two negatives on the bottom, and the overall is going to be a positive. So that works. That's equal to or greater than zero. Zero would go negative, positive on the top, and then it would have negative, negative on the bottom. That's going to be an overall negative. That doesn't work. 2.5 would be negative and then positive on the top. And then negative and positive on the bottom. That's going to be an overall positive. That does work. 3.5. 3, 3.5 minus 4 is still negative. Then we've got positive. Then positive, positive on the bottom. This one's overall negative doesn't work. And then a 1,000 is going to be four positives. So that does work. That's an overall positive. Now, this is where you have to be careful. Okay, so we need to look now at the dots we've created. Are they included? Are they not included? We're going to go from negative infinity to negative 1, and we're including negative 1. Then we're going to go from negative 1, so, sorry, then we're going to go from 2, but we're not including 2, to 3, and we're not including 3. And then we're going to go up to 4, and we are including 4, to positive infinity. Okay, we're not including this area, we're not including this area. We are including those three. Okay, let's look at another one. So we'll try this next one. This next one's a little bit harder just based on the way that it's drawn here, but it's not too bad. So we've got 2 over x minus 3 over 2 minus x. Our vertical asymptotes are already there. So we've got 0 and what is that? Uh, negative 1 half. We need to find our x-intercept. So we need to make this all equal to one thing. Okay, so we're going to have... Um, 2 times, oh, I'm going to write it up here. So 2 times 2x two minus, or plus 1 times 3 minus 3 times 3 times x 
minus 4 times x times x plus 1. It's all greater than, and our bottom is going to become, it's all greater than 0. x plus 1 and 3. Okay? We can multiply everything on the bottom over the other side. We only need to consider the top. But for the top, we're going to have to simplify this. So we're going to have, what, 6, um, 12x plus 6 minus 9x minus, oh, what is this, 4x squared minus 4x. Okay, now that's going to become negative 4x squared plus 8x plus 6. Okay, it's greater than or equal to 0. Oh, that's square. We can divide that down, kind of change the signs a little bit to get 2x squared minus 4x minus 3. Okay, now we can check if that's going to factor for us. It doesn't look like it is, so we're going to have to use a quadratic formula, which isn't really all that pretty here, but that's okay. Um, what you could end up doing is typically these will factor. Sometimes they're not going to. Um, here they're not going to, so we're going to have our quadratic formula. When we find our answer, we typically you can just use the decimal because we just need to look at the um, intervals minus four times two times negative three all over two times two okay so if we were solving this you're going to end up getting your decimals um, we've got, oh, what is this? So you're going to get your decimals to be around 2.58 or x equals negative 0 0.58. Okay. Now you could put your square root, you could put your exact answers. It's not really all that helpful for us in this situation um, until the very end. Okay, so we can put our square roots, I guess. We've got 4, and that's going to be over 4, so it's plus or minus the square root of, what is that, 16, so 16 plus... Is that 824? So the square root of 40. So this is going to be x is equal to 4 plus root 40 over 4 or 4 minus root 40 over 4. And again, you could simplify that radical, but a lot of calculators do it, so I'm not going to be too concerned. Those are our x-intercepts. Okay, Those values are our x-intercepts. So from lowest to greatest... Our x-intercepts in this case, because we have the greater than sign, our x-intercepts actually aren't included. It has to be greater than. So we've got an open dot at negative 0.58 is open. Okay, that's our lowest number. Then we get to negative 0.5. Then we get to 0, and then we get to 2.58. Oh, let's move that down. Okay, so we've got to work through this. Okay, and we're going to go to look. We need to be looking at, in this case, you can either look at the original equation and see if we're going to have some positives or negatives, or you can look at this equation here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that second equation that I've made. 
I'm going to rewrite it for you. So we're going to have 2x squared minus 4x minus, actually, let's do this. All right. We want to have negative 4x squared plus 8x plus 6 over x, 2x plus 1, and a 3. Now that 3 is always going to be positive, so it's not actually influencing anything. But that's the equation we're going to actually look at. And what we have to do is we have to substitute all of our values into that equation. So you're going to pick numbers like negative 1,000. So negative 1,000, because the top is going to be all negative, so no matter what, the squared value is going to be negative. It's going to be negative 4,000 and then, or sorry, negative 4 times 1,000 squared, okay? Because that negative 1,000 is going to become positive. The top's going to become negative. So we've got a negative on the top. So we're looking at negative 1,000 here. So we've got a negative on the top. We have two negatives on the bottom. This is going to be an overall negative. This one doesn't work. Now we're going to have to try looking at um, a number in between negative 0.58 and negative 0.5. So I would say like negative 0.51 is a good number to look at. What that's going to do is going to create, if you go through the top, you've got a squared value. You're minusing away. So we're squaring it. We've got a negative on the top. Um, we're going to get a negative on the bottom and then a positive value here. So that's going to be a positive. So that one does work. All right. Now we're going to just keep moving along. So let's call this negative 0.1. So negative 0.1 would be what um, on the top, we're going to be negative, negative, and negative. So that's going to be overall negative. That doesn't work. I'll call this one 1. So negative 4 plus 8 plus 6 is going to be positive. 1 is going to be positive. And that's going to be positive. So this is positive. That works. And then let's call this 10, 000, or 1,000. So that's going to be a negative and two positives. So that is going to be negative. So that doesn't work. So then therefore, x is such that it's between. Now here's where we've got 4 minus root 40, I'm trying to give you the exact answer here, over 4, all the way to 0 0.5, or sorry, negative 0 0.5, is unioned with 0 up to 4 plus root 40 over 4, okay? None of them are included, so they're all round brackets. These questions are difficult, so they're going to take you a little bit of time. You have to go through them slowly. Unfortunately, if you get something like this, it is rather ugly to work with. But typically, the questions look something like this, where you're just looking at the brackets. Okay, So there is some questions associated with that that are like this. Um, I would say most of them are. Some look like this.